Alrighty, yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy Mr. DDG94 here. Back with another reaction video today. We fit a react to top 20 greatest male rap lyricists of all time. Now we're not talking about rappers or rap or, or artists. We're talking about lyricists here. People with the pen, people that put that lyrical, spiritual, miracle in the spiritual category. Them, them niggas, the, the, the niggas that I be falling asleep to because they be trying too hard to sound like they actually saying something, but you're not saying nothing at all. Uh, them niggas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so without further ado, man, let's get right into this, man. Let's get right into this. Uh, top 20 greatest male rap lyricists of all time. So niggas with the lyrics, niggas with the bars, nigga. This is why I watch Mojo, by the way. So the mayonnaise and tuna is in effect. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most influential and dynamic wordsmiths in hip hop. We'll be focusing on male MCs for this list. I'm not gonna complain about any of the people on this list unless they don't belong on this list. Like, if I have, I will start, I will bring up examples of why these niggas don't belong on this list. If the people that I feel like I, I feel it in my bones, I feel it in my spirit. I feel it. I just, I just feel that these niggas gonna put some, some artists on here that I'm just not gonna be agreeing with. I'm just, I'm just saying. I got examples to back up my argument. So if they, if they put the people on here that I, yeah, 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 yeah. Without further ado, let's get right into it. <laughs> it's saving the ladies for another day. Trying to make a sister feel low. You know all of that got to go. Number 20, Ghostface Killer. Okay. The overarching lineup of Wu-Tang Clan is a veritable murderer's row of MCs, from Method Man and Jizza to Inspector Deck. However, for us, there's one Wu member who rises above the rest when it comes to lyricism, Ghostface Killer. I give an order to my peeps across the water to go and snatch up props all around the border. This is due in part to his solo work outside of the clan, from his landmark Iron Man LP from 96 to more recent efforts like this 12 Reasons to Die series. Smurred and done. I'm back with a bird in my arm, back to pillage, I rock a live grenade as a charm. His collaborations with fellow members like Raekwon also highlight Ghostface Killer's narrative imagination. This is an MC whose lyrics feel cinematic and expansive, the sort of words that fuel stories in our minds and magic on the mic. Number 19, MF Doom. The much missed MF to him. Doom R. was R. much to more than just an MC in a dope mask. Living off borrowed time, the clock ticks faster. That'll be the hour they knock the slick blaster. This British-born rapper never saw a rhyme he couldn't improve via his thesaurus mind, nor a beat he couldn't make better with his flow. Doom's knowledge of pop culture, particularly comic books and genre cinema, shined through his writing and influenced countless MCs in his wake. He plot shows like robberies, in and out, one, two, three, nobody's please. This was rap that was unafraid to be anything and everything all at once. Fantastical, conversational, even confrontational when the need arose. MF Doom was a truly unique voice in hip hop and one that will never be forgotten. It's ugly, like look at you, it's a damn shame. Just remember all caps when you spell the man name. Number 18, Ice Cube. Hmm. NWA was another hip hop mega group that featured an array of talent within its ranks. Easy E, Dr. Dre, and MC Ren are all considered legends today. I feel like he should be, I feel like, I feel like Cube should be a little bit higher, but I, I wouldn't put him too high. I would definitely put him, I would definitely put him in top 10 if we talking lyricists. If we talking lyricists, I would definitely have to put Ice Cube top 10. I can't put him top five or nothing like that, but top 10 most definitely. But Ice Cube was perhaps the group's greatest weapon. As I leave, believe I'm stopping, but when I come back, boy, I'm coming straight, straight out of Compton. Compton. After all, it's since been revealed that Cube helped write a lot of the words on NWA's landmark Straight Outta Compton LP. But the man's definitely not just a ghostwriter. <laughs> Cube's own 
Hope's solo career has seen the California native become a defining lyrical voice for gangster rap in the 90s. A bold and brash lyrical maestro with aggro to spare. We can always feel the energy when Cube is on the mic. Then, now, and forever. Today I didn't even have to use my AK. I gotta say it was a good day. Number 17, Chuck D. Mm. Hip-hop, like many of music's great art forms, has worn multiple creative hats throughout its existence. For every block I put, overplayed wait, 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 wait. I have to put Chuck D in the top 10 too. I think his political stance and what he was representing at the top, I think he should definitely be in the top 10 as well. Forms has worn multiple creative hats throughout its existence. For every block party MC in the 80s, there was a visceral gangster rapper in the 90s. There are very few voices more closely associated with politically motivated rap than Chuck D, however, thanks to his pioneering work with Public Enemy. This is an MC who's motivated to educate and encourage questioning thought in his audience. The book up the new school rap game, writers treat me like Coltrane, insane. Chuck D also don't, held an open don't, mind don't to combine hip hop, seemingly disparate musical genres like heavy metal. This was seen with P.E.'s 90s collaboration with thrash metal band Anthrax. Chuck D's insightful lyrics shine through it all, too, sending a powerful message to all who would listen. Number 16, Scarface. Nah. There's a raw realness to the del- This nigga top five, bro. This nigga top five dead or alive, bro. This nigga top five, bro. If we talking lyricists, bro, storytelling, political stance, he, he checks all boxes, bro. This is a top five MC, bro. Hell nah, bro. Hell nah, bro. Scarface is top five, bro. Delivery of Scarface from the Ghetto Boys. I tried to do the right things, Major, but that didn't put no food on the table. A vocal attack that speaks to the group's desperate living while coming up in Houston, Texas. Scarface and his Ghetto Boys bandmates were firebrands for controversy throughout their career. Yet, it's this habitual edge stepping that also helped make them legends. Can't keep a steady hand because I'm nervous. Every Sunday, Sunday morning, morning I'm in service. service. No topic is off limits for Scarface. From stories of boundary pushing violence to more fictional flows that feel like lurid crime stories come to life. Scarface could do pretty much anything he set his mind to, and he did so with the Ghetto Boys, all the way to the bank. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Number 15, Black Thought. It doesn't matter whether you're enjoying Black Thought's lyricism. All right, bro, you can miss me with the roots, bro. <laughs> you can miss me with the roots, bro. Anything that got to do with the roots, bro, I'm 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 at, I'm at to send I'm gonna have to send homie from Tennessee out on you. John in Tennessee, go ahead. What you want to say? That shit is fucking trash, dog. Get the fuck off that airway. Oh, come ah. on, man. <laughs> hear me, hear me good, nigga. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. As a member of the Roots or with his solo career, the man is beyond talented. To MC requires skills. I demand some show. I let the frauds keep fronting and roam like a cellular phone. Black Thought challenges his audiences with complex rhymes and wordplay that practically demands of the source. His live performances are electric, as well showcasing Black Thought's ridiculous breath control and magnetic connection with the crowd. The tides rising at the same time like they synchronize for making art, for making love, for making high. He's gone on to influence a ton of rappers over the years with no sign of slowing down and even entertains on a nightly basis over on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. Black Thought is the real deal. Number 14, Big Pun. Mm, the lyricism okay. of Big Pun feels simultaneously dedicated now, this is actually to a good spot for Big Pun. This is actually a good spot. The way to its future. It's clear that the NYC native loved the lyricism of legends that came before and combined this nostalgia with the flow that was laser focused. Big Pun could effortlessly hopscotch his way through a rhyme scheme, utilizing speed and intricacy to make his creative mark. You know the deal, we steal from the rich and keep it, keep it, it's no secret. Watch me and Joe go back and forth and free creep. Pun's solo career and his work with the group Terror Squad possessed an appeal that cast a wide net, incorporating reality, fantasy, and more personal tales into a delicious musical stew that always tasted 100% pun. Uptown, uptown, 
Yeah. Number 13, Big Daddy Kane. The story of Brooklyn's Big Daddy Kane is a tale of duality. Two sides of an MC who could do it all and do it with style. But I'm not animated like a cartoon. I'm for real shooting lyrics like a hawk. The softer, more romantic side of Big Daddy Kane was well documented with songs like Smooth Operator. But other tracks like Ain't No Half Steppin' proved that there was much more to the man than romance. Some say sinister, not stopping the groove until when it's the climax, climax, relax and chill. Big Daddy Kane could indeed battle with the best of them, delivering rhythms and wordplay that got the point across with the sweeping brush strokes of an artiste. The legacy here is one that links the old and new schools in the best way possible. To go to work and my job for the evening is to pick up the microphone and rap to believe it. Number 12, Cool G Rap. New York City was right, an embarrassment of riches when it came now. to talented <laughs> MCs. Cool G Rap is a name from the classic old school, yet also one that continues to resonate when it comes to being an influence today. This is thanks largely to the man's pioneering work developing multi-syllabic rhymes and bringing them to the masses. Street suckers are clobber because my town is full of cops and robbers. You're not promised tomorrow in this little shop of harvest. The sound of Cool G Rap, as well as his work with the Juice Crew, was a sound of flux, a bridge, pun intended, from the block parties of old to the street knowledge style of the late 80s. The stories that Cool G Rap tells feel easy to imagine in our mind's eye, and his technical skill will go on to influence many MC rappers in his way. I go so loud for G Rap, it is funny, nothing's funny, it's a damn shame what I gotta do to get the money. Number 11, Andre 3000. One half of the group Outkast, Andre 3000 may just be the most unorthodox lyricist out there. Had my pencil and plus my paper, we caught the eighties. I'm not mad at it. I think eleven. I think eleven is perfectly fine for Andre 3000. I think that's perfectly fine, even if this nigga never had a solo album. But still, I I don't I don't mind him being at number eleven. As much of a poet as he is a rapper, 3000 innovates with his delivery, following no specific pattern other than what his stream of thoughts dictates. He's also highly introspect, bringing an intellectualism to his lyrics that separates him from those rappers bogged down by the possibly overplayed gangster and money-driven rap subgenres. Andre's output may have slowed down over the years, but when he drops a guest verse, you just have to sit back and appreciate. Number 10, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne earned all of his success the old fashioned way by putting in some hard work. The New Orleans native recorded a lot Boy, you of got that yay, yo, and cook even experimented nigga. with hard rock and heavy metal along the way. Through it all, Lil Wayne honed a lyricism that wasn't afraid to thrill and offend in equal measure. Who that said they gonna be Lil Wayne? My name ain't Dick, but I keep that flame night. Additionally, his utilization of autotune helped expose the technique to commercial audiences. But make no mistake, Lil Wayne was no gimmick. Instead, this MC combined a unique visual aesthetic, dizzying flow, and wordplay that set him apart from all of his peers. Bitch, real G's move silence like lasagna. I, I'm not gonna sit up here and argue with you about Lil Wayne, even though I wasn't a fan of Lil Wayne growing up because, uh, Because that 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 nigga diss juvenile for no reason. Like you gonna make you know juvenile made his album four hundred degrees and then your next album is five hundred degrees because juvenile decided to leave cash money because he wasn't getting paid by Birdman. And then years later you find out that Birdman ain't paying you. The fucking irony, the fucking irony, but you know, teach his own, you know what I'm saying? I bet you, I bet you, I, <laughs> I, I still ain't forgave Wayne for that. That's that's the main reason why I never listen to Lil Wayne. That's why I always hate it. Bro, you heard that new Lil Wayne, man? Fuck Lil Wayne, nigga. Fuck Lil Wayne, nigga. You heard that, you heard that T.I.? 
You had that paper trail? That shit way better than Carter 3. No, uh, no, it's not. Yes, the fuck it is, nigga. Look at all, look at all these motherfucking bangers on paper trail, nigga. Ain't about y'all listen to no fucking Carter 3. Get the fuck out of here. Number nine, KRS One. If there's one legendary MC that can be considered something of a hip hop historian, it might be KRS One. I played the diamond, you played the target. You all know my name, so I guess I'll just start it. That's because this is a creative voice that speaks to generations, informing the young while thrilling the old with lyricism that feels timeless. It may feel like an obvious statement, but KRS-One just has a great voice. It's deep, rich, gritty, and raw, with righteous energy and a legitimate love that feels palpable with each word. Meanwhile, KRS-One can just as easily point out political points as socio-cultural ones, making music that simultaneously educational and entertaining. That's what happened when you speak your rap and your skills are lacking and your beats are whacking and you meet the captain, the beats are dragging, your mouth is shut because you eat the magnum. I can't stand niggas that rap like that. The lyrical spiritual, my ends are lyrical. Like, like, nigga, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I can't stand that shit. Hear me and hear me good, nigga. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. The fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. Hey, send these niggas that rap like that, dog. Additionally, Not saying nothing. There is one also found the time to collaborate outside of the hip hop spectrum. You just make the shit rhyme. Classic intro for hardcore punk icons. Sick of it all. Blastmaster Karis One, fresh for '89. You suckers. Number eight, Yasin Bay, aka Most Def. The artist formerly known as Most Deaf is a living legend and perhaps one of the greatest examples of conscious rapping to- I don't know about this. Yeah, this is gonna be the first no for me. Most Deaf is gonna be the first no for me. I'm sorry. Great actor though. Most Deaf is a great actor. But rapping? Nah, I'm good, Chief. Ever hold a microphone. I'm tight polite, but now I'm looking at it skeptically. His baby girl got all the right weaponry. Design of fabric, shoes, and accessories. Bay, while performing as deaf, vacillated easily between intensely personal conversations to larger, more politically driven lyrical diatribes. Through it all, the voice at play is unique and defiant, whether it's rapping with Talib Kweli in the group Black Star or within his solo career. My narrative grows to explain its existence amidst the harbor lights which remain in the distance. His hit Mathematics is a great example of the master Yasin Bey at work. But honestly, any place is a good place to start when it comes to the recorded work of this MC. Why did one straw break the camel's back? Here's the secret. The million other straws underneath it. It's all mathematics. Number seven, Eminem. Fans may argue Eminem has the most range compared to other rappers. You think I give a damn about a Grammy? Half of you critics can't even stomach you, let alone stand me. He can be fast, sharp, and ferocious on the mic. Wow. Earlier Eminem. If this was the earlier Eminem we would be critiquing, then yes, most definitely. He irked that seven spot. Older, the, the now Eminem, the more to the 2010s to now Eminem. Hear me, hear me good, nigga. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. The fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. He should be like number 12 or number 14 at best. Other times he can be emotional and vulnerable. A long career has seen his lyrics evolve over time. In his early days, Slim Shady had downright nasty metaphors and similes, and anyone who dared diss them was brutally beaten down. But I kept priming and step right in the next cipher. Best believe somebody's paying the pod piper. However, in recent years, particularly on the Marshall Mathers LP2, M has found an affinity for double entendres, which grow more and more clever. Fans who sift through his lyrics over and over are rewarded with new surprises every time they plug in their earbuds. Levitating, never fading, and I know the haters are forever waiting for the day to think I say I fell up to be celebrating because I know the way to get him motivated. I make elevating music. You make elevator music. Number six, rock him. Okay. One of the most important pioneers in hip hop history, Rakim is widely considered to be one of the most, if not the most, influential rappers of all time. Even if it's jazz or the quiet storm, I hope a beat up converted into hip hop form. Abandoning the schoolyard and abrasive of lyrical and rhyming patterns of MCs before him, Rakim turned to smart, meaningful lyrics delivered through his work with DJ Eric B. Feeling out of place, cause man, do I miss a pen and a paper, a stereo and paper, me and Eric B in a nice big place. Fish, Using his turn with multi-syllabic rhymes, Rakim channeled his jazz background to rap with a free rhythm style. 
spitting lines calmly and smoothly. Many of the greats have credited Rakim as an important influence, including the likes of Tupac, Nas, Eminem, and Biggie, to name a few. It's cool when you freak to the beat, but don't sweat the technique. Number five, Jay Z. He doesn't do as much rapping. <laughs> Oh, I thought they was going to put him at number one. I was going to go off. I thought they was going to put him at number one. <laughs> I was about to go the fuck off. I was about to say, hell no. Nah. I got plenty of dirt on this nigga. <laughs> I, hey, trust me. I got plenty of... I got, I got songs for days on this nigga. And why he should never be considered number one in any fucking category. But they put him at number five. I would say he's like number eight at best. Jay-Z is like number eight at best. Number five, that's pushing it. To say he top five all time, fuck no. This nigga stole so many lines from Biggie. Biggie only put out two albums when he was alive. This man stole all this nigga. This, this man right here stole damn near his whole damn catalog. And that nigga only put out two albums. But I'll let y'all sit on that these days but in his prime hove dominated the game got the city drinking crystals we up the feet rappers going broke trying to keep up with me jay-z has his own unique rapping style which heavily relies on flow to emphasize the lyrical content the book how to rap complements hove's ability to use rest as well as partially linking to provide structure to verses and smoothly incorporate rhymes pay us like you owe us for all the years that you hold us we can talk but money talk so talk more about Ultimately, verses string together like silk, so enhancing to both the, the listening quality and content of the rhymes. And with that, his lyrical content is not to be ignored either. Always walking a tightrope between gangster and suave businessman, Jay-Z's lyrics reflect a rough upbringing and a grounded perspective on reality. Hail Mary to the city, you're a virgin, and Jesus can't save you, life starts when the church is. Number four. The notorious B.I.G. I'm about to say, y'all better put this man above Jay Z. Greatest rappers of all time. Biggie's life was tragically cut short, but while he may not have a list of content as long as other MCs, the quality. I can't argue with Biggie's lyrical play. Now, if we was talking like 20 greatest rap artists of all time, and they put him at number four, I'd be like, fuck no. But if we just talking lyricists. Big, uh, the fact that Biggie ain't in the top two is crazy. Who the fuck they got in the top two then? If it ain't Eminem, it ain't Jay-Z, and it ain't uh, Biggie, who the fuck is the top two then? Because I, I would consider Biggie top two. But I digress, I digress of his work is undeniable tremendous cream the dollar and the dream still tote get strapped with infrared beams biggie smalls had a wide range of talent he was powerful wickedly clever and descriptively vivid all at the same time he delivered smart lyrics often deploying idioms to craft purposeful lines i bring pain blood stains on what remains of his jacket he had a gun he should have packed it he also had a penchant for dishing out strong punchlines, which always landed with precision, whether or not they were designed to be funny or brutal. At times aggressive, others vulnerable. At the height of his powers, Biggie's lyrics did nothing short of a maze. Birthdays was the worst, worst days. days. Now we sip champagne when we thirsty. Day. Number three, Kendrick Lamar. Fuck with no. Golden voice and safe. Fuck no. Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck no. Artist, yes. Lyricist, fuck no. <laughs> this nigga is number nine. Fuck out of here. This nigga is number nine. Ain't no fucking way y'all put this man above Biggie. Y'all dick riding. I get it, bro. I get it, bro. He washed Drake. I get it, bro. He washed Drake. But the, 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 the glazing is getting out of hand, bro. The glazing is getting out of hand, bro. We, we Come on, bro. We got to stop this glazing, bro. This, this, this glazing is... 
This glazing is unmatched right now, bro. This, this some this. We 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 getting out. Of, well, not not we, but y'all niggas getting out of control. Y'all niggas glazing, bro. Take that rubber off. Fuck that hoe. Meat to meat. Meat to meat. Meat to meat. Meat to meat. The glazing is real, bro. I get it. He watched Drake, but come on, dog. Even grace of a new generation of rappers, Kendrick Lamar has learned from the greats and built on their lessons to dominate the modern game without sacrificing his integrity. I stood up, shut the blind, closed the screen, jungle trying, made to the back where she reside, then she said, read between the lines. Rather, it's his commitment to authenticity and a critical awareness of both the rap game and the world at large that have gained him popularity. And I think that I'm feeling the pop, I see the love in her eyes, I see the feeling of freedom is granted as soon as the damage of I could rock. Fearless and highly intelligent, the Compton native tackles societal issues with unique skill, sometimes taking the role of a storyteller, while other times playing critic. Songs like All Right and Swimming Pools take on societal problems on both a micro and macro level, with a creative vibe only K-Dot can pull off. I rap, I black on tracks, so rest assured, my rights, my wrongs, I write till I'm right with God. Number two, Tupac Shakur. Mm, Another I'm rapper mad. to have his life cut tragically short. It. Tupac differs from Big, the counterpart within whom he's usually compared, in that he channeled his energies primarily on societal issues. Now Brenda's belly's getting bigger, but no one seems to notice any change in a figure. Both his parents, as well as several other family members, were involved members of the Black Panthers, which Shakur... All my life I heard... Tupac not a better lyricist though. Tupac never said nothing real. Why is it that every list I see, Tupac is higher than Biggie? If this man's not a lyricist, why is he always higher than Biggie? I I just want I just want to know. I just want to know. I'm just saying, my whole life, I've been saying, Tupac, in my personal opinion, is one of the greatest artists to ever fucking, rap artists to ever fucking exist. Everybody like, nah, nigga, nah, nigga, you ain't listen to no Biggie. I'm like, but Biggie didn't touch on the shit that Pac touched on. So, 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 nigga. He got them bars, though, nigga. The fuck does bars have to do with social, social injustices and what's going on in the community? And how we need to change as a society to be better. So you mean to tell me we would rather put the integrity of rapping over beats about hollering at girls and selling drugs and killing niggas versus actually making change and peace in the world with our own community? I mean, if, if that's if that's the lyricism you into, then that's what you into. I'm not judging you, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying, though. Core's lyrical content heavily reflects. Additionally, Pac was a student both of poetry and theater, which gracefully shined through his own work. With a keen critical eye, Tupac engaged with the problems he saw in his own community and the world. You gotta operate the easy way. I made a G today. But you made it in a sleazy way. Songs like Brenda's Got a Baby and Dear Mama remind us of Pac's unique ability to tug at our heartstrings and make us think with just a few lines. And there's no way I could pay you back. But my plan is to show you that I understand. You all appreciate it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Nas. When he first broke onto the scene with Ill Matt. I can go through so many examples of Nas putting out some of the most cringe worthy bars to ever fucking exist. I could go through a whole fucking list. <laughs> this nigga got cringe. This nigga got cr the most cringe worthy bars. I, I wouldn't say more than um, I wouldn't say more than Biggie though. Biggie got some cringy ass bars. But this nigga got some bars that just make you I don't know why you said that, bro. But I get it, though. I get it. 
Attic. The rap game knew Nas was going to be something special. They weren't wrong. Sweat off my zone, spit the phlegm on the streets. Sway Tim's on my beats, makes my cypher complete. While his social and cultural awareness give his lyrics meaningful content, it's his lyrical construction and creative storytelling that land Nasty Nas the number one spot on this list. He pioneered what has been labeled a conversational flow, meaning Nas isn't restricted by beats. He follows his heart and mind. The street raised me up, giving a f I thought George in the gold chain was living it up. His raps tell stories unconventionally and from unique perspectives. Consider this, how many MCs have rap from the point of view of a gun? When I'm empty, I'm quiet, finding myself feeling to be fired. Not many have the skill or willingness to challenge themselves like that. Thankfully, Nas can. 27 summers, that wasn't even the goal. Who's your all-time favorite MC? Let us know in the comments down below. People got scared and ran the way they think I'm weird. I was born this way. How sharp alligator. <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. So let's see here. Let's go through this list again. I feel like um Surprisingly, I feel like J. Cole was left off here. I know J. Cole doesn't have the best discography, but he does has he does have his moments. So J. Cole should have definitely been on here as a lyricist. I would give him a lyricist. Um Try to think who else. Common should have been on here for sure. Common should have definitely been on here. I don't think who else would be on this list. As a lyricist, though. Mm, I, I can't really think of nobody because a lot of the newer guys are cringeworthy. Or they just don't, or they don't write their own shit. Some of the guys from the 2000s wouldn't make this list either. I don't know. I just feel like J. Cole and Common got left off. I feel like Common and J. Cole should have definitely been on this list. But that's just me, though. But anyway, so that's just going to about do it for this one, man. I will see you all in the next video. Till then, peace out.